Hi, welcome to the screencast for 9.4 on voltaic cells. Voltaic cells is just a fancy word for battery. Um, voltaic meaning voltage, so that's what a battery does is it creates voltage or electro potential. And when a redox equation occurs, normally you have the zinc and the copper, you have two different metals um, in the same cell or the same test tube. And so then as um, one is being oxidized, one's being reduced, one's giving up electrons, the other's taking the electrons, the energy is released as heat. And electrons are being transferred, in this case, from the zinc metal to the copper ions or from the more reactive metal to the less reactive metal. But if you separate these two half reactions into what we call half cells, the electrons would flow from the more reactive metal over to the less reactive metal or ions through a wire, and then that um, would generate electricity as electrons move through the wire rather than just releasing the energy as heat. So a simple half cell is when you place a metal in its own solution, and that solution would be at equilibrium then, because zinc metal, if, for example, if I have it in zinc sulfate, you'll have two reactions going on. Zinc atoms will form ions by releasing electrons onto the surface of the zinc metal, and at the same time, zinc ions will gain electrons to form zinc atoms. So the reaction is reversible, it's at equilibrium, and you're not going to see any change um, in the container at all. There will be a charge between the positive ions in the solution and the negative charge accumulating on the zinc metal. So as the positive ions move off, um, there's electrons accumulating on the zinc metal. That's referred to as electrode potential. And the position of this equilibrium will depend on the reactivity of the metal. The more reactive the metal, the bigger that'll be. And more electrode potential means um, there's more ions and the equilibrium lies further to the left. So then you need another half cell to make a complete cell or a battery. So if we put copper metal into a solution of copper ions, we'll have the same thing going on. Some copper ions will gain electrons to become copper metal. Some copper atoms will give up their electrons, leave them behind, and become copper ion. And there'll be an electric uh, potential on the copper as well. But since copper is less reactive than zinc, the equilibrium for the copper is going to lie further to the right or to the copper solid side. There'll be fewer ions. So there's going to be less potential generated. So now when we connect these two cells with a wire, we can expect electrons to flow from the more reactive or the higher potential zinc metal where more electrons are piling up to where there's fewer electrons on the copper metal. So a voltaic cell is two half cells connected by a wire so electrons can flow from the more reactive to the less reactive. We say it spontaneously because it'll happen, you don't have to put any energy in. Uh, the half cells are often called electrodes. The anode is always where oxidation occurs and in a voltaic cell it has a negative charge because zinc atoms are losing their electrons and flowing out um, into the half cell. The ions are flowing out into the half cell or away from the electrode. The electrons are gathering on the electrode, and then when they can, they'll move over to the cathode. So the cathode is where reduction occurs. It has a positive charge as copper ions are moving toward it to gain the electrons flowing that direction. So here's a picture of a voltaic cell. You have zinc, the more reactive metal. So there's going to be electrons moving across the wire, whereas zinc ions are going to move away from the electrode. And on the other side, we're on the opposite. The copper ions are going to move toward the electrode as um, the electrons come over to the copper metal and are there for the copper to be reduced or to gain those electrons. The other piece of a voltaic cell we need to talk about is something called a salt bridge because in very short order, your electrode potential is going to be gone. As electrons move over here, suddenly there's going to be as many electrons on the copper side as there is on the zinc side, and there's going to be no um, pressure to push those electrons or no attraction for those electrons to come that way. There's actually going to be equal pressure or equal potential on each side. So a salt bridge takes care of this problem. So potential difference or voltage will only be generated between half cells or electrodes when the circuit's complete. So that means you need a metal wire for the electrons to flow through, and you need two different half cells. Then to keep it going, you also need what's called a salt bridge, which is a glass tube or some kind of absorbent paper that contains an aqueous solution of ions. And um, common ones are KCl, potassium nitrate, or sodium chloride. 
And what the salt bridge does is it gives a chance to replace the anions to one side and the cations to the other. And again, um, a salt bridge allows the anions to flow to the anode because the electrons are flowing away from the anode. So you need a negative charge to come in to maintain that pressure. Whereas over at the cathode, the ions are being reduced to a neutral metal, so cations can flow to the cathode. And then that helps maintain the potential difference so electrons will keep flowing. So any two half cells can be connected to make a voltaic cell. The greater the potential difference, the greater the voltage between them. The direction of electron flow is determined by the difference um, in reactivity of the two metals or in reducing strength. And you can look at a metal reactivity to uh, predict the flow and also to predict the relative voltage. And this is the table in your book. Um, it's on page 12. I think it's table 14. They give the electrode potentials. And you'll see at the top, the most reactive metal has the highest negative potential. And then it decreases from there. So you would look at the two potentials and um, subtract those to come up with your relative voltage you could expect. So again, a more reactive with the less reactive should generate your greatest potential.